Am I recording? Is it working? We'll find out! Hi, I'm Shell, and I'm a cosplayer. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Or if you're a subscriber, welcome back! Last week I made this prop from Super Danganronpa 2. If you missed that video, I will put it up in the corner somewhere. I never know where the corner ends up once it's on YouTube. I think it's here. I could be wrong. But today we are going to talk about your first cosplay convention. Yay! If you are new to cosplay or new to conventions, welcome! I am so glad to have you here! A lot of people seem to have gotten into cosplay during quarantine, when obviously it was not safe to go to a convention. So I get a ton of comments from people who say they've never been to a con before, which to me is wild because I started cosplaying exclusively for conventions. <laughs> but each of us have our own cosplay journey, and someday, eventually, hopefully, it will be safe to go to conventions again. So let's talk about it. Now, if you are not familiar with my channel, here's some context for you. I have been going to conventions and cosplaying for five years now. I have attended conventions with a hundred people. I have attended conventions with a hundred thousand people. I've gone to conventions in the Northeast United States, and I've gone to conventions abroad in England. So I've seen a lot, I've been to a lot. <laughs> so we're going to talk about what cons are, what happens at them, and what do you do at them? And then I'm going to give you some of my tips for having a great convention experience. First, what's a convention? It's a bunch of nerds hanging out, essentially. Like, that's the best way I can describe it, to be honest. But in all seriousness, there's a huge variety and range of conventions. Small conventions can last just one afternoon, or big conventions like San Diego Comic-Con can go for an entire week. If you are trying to find a con near you, Honestly, my best recommendation is to Google search your location, Anime Con or Comic Con. There's a lot of websites and resources that list conventions scheduled throughout the year, so you're sure to find something by doing a Google search. There's Anime Cons, Sci Fi Cons, Comic Cons, Gaming Cons, Cosplay Cons, Furry Cons if you're into that. Whatever you like, there's probably a convention for it. But no matter what convention you go to, they're probably going to have a similar structure. So, what happens at a con? Well, whether it's one day or a full week, it's probably hosted in a hotel or convention center or university perhaps, and there's some kind of events going on in a schedule. Once you have found your convention, I highly recommend checking their website and social media because that is going to give you all of the details. Most conventions that I have been to, whether they were small or large, have a similar setup. First, there's Artist Alley and Dealer's Hall. These are an area in the convention where vendors will set up booths to sell you things. If it's the Artist Alley, it will be independent artists selling fan art or original art that they have made themselves as prints, buttons, stickers, crochets, stuffed animals, you name it. If it's the dealer's hall, they will be selling licensed merchandise of anime, comic characters, whatever you can think of. So dealer's hall is where you're going to get your officially licensed Love Live keychains. Artist Alley is where you get your cute Gravity Falls fan art. Capiche? But of course, conventions are not just about shopping. There are also a ton of events. Most conventions hold a masquerade, which is a formal competition where you submit your cosplay to be judged by a panel and potentially win a prize for your craftsmanship. Conventions also hold dances, ranging from super casual raves to very formal balls. Usually the schedule has some sort of cosplay game, and I can't explain every single one of these, you'll have to Google them, but a quick list includes lip sync, dating game, deathmatch, uh, cosplay chess. Is that everything? Yeah, I think that's everything. <laughs> There's more. There's more, but I don't know the rest. <laughs> These games and events typically include cosplayers that have signed up beforehand to participate. So if you're interested in these, definitely check out the convention website and see what they offer. 
There's also smaller events like panels, which can be anything from an industry professional or celebrity or voice actor giving an interview and taking questions from fans, or it can be your local cosplayer who likes to give presentations about their knowledge. Is that just what I do on YouTube? So, in summary, uh, conventions hold a huge variety of options taking place throughout the entire convention. So that's what's happening. But what do you do? Well, whatever you want. It sounds cliche, but conventions are truly what you make of it. I like to do panels, I've done several for different conventions, and I like to talk about social media and cosplay and our whole community we have and share tips and tricks. I have friends that will spend entire convention weekends participating in games because they really like the aspect of putting on a performance for people and getting to be part of the fun. I have other friends that do nothing and just like wander around enjoying themselves. That's why I highly recommend checking out the convention's website and schedule before the convention and seeing all the different options you can peruse. Now that you have some background information about conventions, let's talk my tips. Like I said at the beginning, I have been going to conventions for five years. Am I old yet in the cosplay community? Not really. There are people who've been going for decades, but I consider myself old and wise. As with any tip I share in any of my videos, these are based on my personal experiences and opinions. So please feel free to take them and change them to however suits you best. My first tip is specific for cosplayers. Before the convention, put on your entire cosplay, head to toe, and make sure you can use the bathroom. It sounds ridiculous, but this is a legitimate problem, and I highly recommend doing the test run before the convention so you don't run into this. I promise you there is nothing worse than having the time of your life, meeting all these new friends, seeing all this awesome merch, taking all these cute pictures, and then getting into the bathroom stall after like a line of six people and there's like more people waiting and you feel like you have to go in a rush and you realize like you can't get your pants off and how are you going to pee? Don't do that. <laughs> I have cosplays I cannot use the bathroom in. I know this and those cosplays are specifically reserved for photo shoots. They do not go to conventions. Your pre-con test run of your cosplay is not just important for bathroom reasons, it's also important to gauge your mobility. I have costumes that I cannot physically sit down in. My tutu for Ladybug does not fit in a chair. <laughs> My hoop skirt for Bean could not make it up an escalator. This doesn't mean you can't wear that costume to a convention, but it will mean you are prepared for what limitations come with it, so you're not surprised. Something I do when I'm wearing a complex costume to a convention is I bring what I call a ditch outfit, and it's literally a pair of athletic shorts and a t-shirt that I can change into if wearing the costume just becomes too uncomfortable and too inconvenient. I've only ever used my ditch outfit once, it was for Ladybug, of course, because <laughs> that costume's a little bit cursed, but I like the security of knowing I have an extra option with me in case something goes wrong. My second tip is relevant to both cosplayers and non-cosplayers. Photos always require permission. I like to think this is a fairly well understood concept in the cosplay community, but it's still worth talking about. I promise you there is Nothing creepier than just standing somewhere, minding your own business, talking to your friend, and realizing 20 feet away, there's a stranger taking a picture of you. Ugh. I truly hope I don't need to explain why this is just so incredibly rude. I truly hope that you, as a human being watching this video, understand basic respect and know that before you take a picture of someone, you should ask them first. It literally takes three seconds. It doesn't have to be a big thing. You can just say, hey, can I get a photo? That's it. That's all you need to do. And it's so, so incredibly rude not to just give someone that basic courtesy of asking permission. Tip number three, it's okay to say no. 
and you should sometimes. This kind of ties in with asking for photos, but it also applies to if someone asks to touch your cosplay, or hold your prop, or put their arm around you for a photo, or maybe someone wants a hug as they're chatting with you, or maybe someone offers you a snack. It's okay to say no. This is something the cosplay community talks about a lot, but people still seem surprised when it's put into practice. I know personally, I was at MCM London with a couple of friends, and a guy asked if we wanted hugs, and my two friends said yes and gave him a hug, and I said no! Because <laughs> I didn't want to hug a stranger! It just... I wasn't comfortable, so I said no. And it wasn't a big deal. It doesn't have to be a big deal. You can be polite and say, oh, I'm sorry, no. Or you can be a little more firm if they're making you uncomfortable and say, no, I'm not comfortable with that. Whatever you say, just be comfortable asserting your boundaries. It's okay to say no to a photo. If you're sitting on the ground, shoving a granola bar in your face, and it's the first thing you've eaten that day, and you're so tired and uncomfortable, and half of your cosplay is off, and someone comes up to you asking for a photo, you can say, no, I'm sorry, I'm eating. I've done that. It's okay. Maybe someone asks if you want to go to this 18 plus panel, and maybe you're 18 plus, but you're just not into that kind of content. You can say no. Who cares? Maybe you're at a Comic-Con and you've made the mistake of entering the, like, self-published comic book author aisle. There's always an aisle of, like, a bunch of people who produce their own comic books, and it's really cool, but sometimes they're very pushy and they're like, do you want to hear my, my two-minute pitch about my comic book? And maybe you really have to go to the bathroom. So you can say, no, I'm sorry, and continue on your way. It's not a big deal. <laughs> if you have a hard time saying no, tip number four may help you, and that is to go to the convention with trusted friends. You don't have to go with friends. You could go with your aunt, or your parent, or your sibling, or the neighbor next door, but I highly recommend, especially for your first convention, going with someone you trust. Some conventions are very big, and they can be very overwhelming, and there's a lot of people there that you don't know. And unfortunately, not everyone going to a convention is going to be a super great, nice person there to have fun. Some people go there with bad intentions. And on a lighter note, it's not just about safety. Conventions are just so much more fun with people you care about. I love cheering on my friends as they do their events. I love looking at my friends' faces in the crowd when I do panels. I love wandering the halls with them and saying dumb meme things. It's just a lot of fun, and I highly recommend going with friends. Tip number five? I think it's five. We'll go with five. Tip number five is to make sure to check the convention rules before you go. Did you know that most conventions don't allow roller skates, skateboards, or other wheeled objects? Now you know. This tip is especially important if you're a cosplayer because different conventions have different guidelines for cosplay. I've been to conventions where cosplayers were allowed to walk around in bikinis. I've also been to conventions where there are specific rules about how much of your butt can be showing. Check the rules and make sure your cosplay is allowed. Tip number six may actually be the most important one, at least to me, and it is to bring cash, water, and snacks. You should bring cash to the convention for shopping at the artist alley and the dealer's hall. Sometimes people will have those little like swipey credit card machines so you can make a purchase with card, but sometimes they don't work or the Wi-Fi signal in the hotel is really bad and it's slow. Sometimes they really need singles and giving them some cash would help out their little safe they have behind their table. <laughs> So I like to bring cash because it makes it much easier for the artist and the vendor. And I also like to bring cash because it keeps me within a budget. So if I only have $50, I can only spend, in theory, $50 on merch. You should bring water because it's very important to keep hydrated. I have a story time about how I got heat stroke at a con once and it was bad. Um, so please drink water and keep hydrated. A lot of convention centers will have water fountains, but it's really great to at least have a little water bottle so you can fill it up and bring it around with you. You should bring snacks because convention food 
is very expensive and it may not fit within your allergy or dietary requirements. Did I pay $8 for a soft pretzel at Comic-Con? Yeah, I did. And it was a good pretzel, but it was an $8 pretzel and that's a little much. I like to bring a little Ziploc bag of snacks in my convention backpack, usually granola bars, sometimes some almonds, fruit snacks like the little gummies, and just a couple other things so I can have a quick bite at the convention. My last tip is do not be afraid to ask for help. Conventions are so much fun, but things can still go wrong. Your cosplay is ripping? Ask someone if they have a safety pin, or maybe find a staff member and ask if there's a cosplay repair station at the convention. You can't find panel room three and you're like super lost and you don't know where you are? I've been there. Just ask. Someone complimented your cosplay and took a photo and seemed really nice, but now they won't really leave you alone and you're kind of getting creeped out and you don't feel safe anymore. Find someone and ask for help. Find a staff member. They will usually be in a uniform of some kind so you can identify them, like a brightly colored t-shirt or they'll have a big lanyard around their neck. Go up to a group of cosplayers. Say, hey, um, that guy's kind of creeping me out and I don't feel comfortable. Even if you are a complete stranger and I have never seen you before in my life, if you walk up to me at a convention and say, hey, I don't feel safe right now. Can you help me? I will drop everything to help you out. Like I said earlier, not everyone goes to a con with good intentions, but there are security and safety teams at the con to help you with those situations. For advice on dealing with harassment, I highly recommend watching this video from Acceleration Designs where she talks about what you can say and do to feel safe. I'm gonna throw one last tip in here, especially for all the young cosplayers that follow me. I remember going up the escalator at my first Anime Boston and getting off and seeing this big hallway filled with cosplayers. And I had a moment where I got so excited realizing everyone around me liked the same things I did. I could have screamed, honestly. I was just overwhelmed. If you have that moment, take a minute, take a deep breath, and try to calm down a little. Yes, there's a ton of wonderful, friendly nerds around you who love the same things, but we're also all still people. So if you see someone dressed as your favorite character, don't yell at them. That's really scary. <laughs> when you're at a con, remember it's really important to still behave politely and treat everyone with respect. So that is everything about conventions. Mostly. I mean, we didn't talk about like, photo shoots, or hotel rooms, or uh, transportation. But those could be in other videos. If you want to hear more about anything I talked about in this video, or other things I didn't talk about, let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and for future videos, make sure you are subscribed down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.